YouTube. I'm TK North. Thanks so much for coming through to my YouTube channel. Today is the first of my five minute Lightroom tutorial series where I spend five minutes trying to give you as much information on a particular part of Lightroom as possible. Today we're starting with radial filters. I thought I'd start with radial filters because they're a really simple and easy way to improve your photo editing. So let's not waste too much time, let's get five minutes on the clock, jump into Lightroom and get started. So I've got my first image here in Lightroom, I'm going to select a quick preset just to give it a bit of colour. Come over to this tab here which is your radial filter, click, hold and drag to add it in. Now you can move that to wherever you like from the centre, you can change the size of it from the sides. Shortcuts, if you hit shift it will keep its shape, if you hit option or alt you can drag in just one side of the radial filter. Other useful things to know, if you tick this box, it will show you which area of the photo it's actually affecting. You can come down to feather, which is basically how gradual those settings will be applied. If you have it at zero, it's gonna be very obvious where you apply your settings. The more you bring it up to 100, it's gonna apply them very gradually. So usually I have that on 100. The other thing, if you tick this box, it's gonna change whether it affects the area inside or outside the circle. So for this particular image, I wanna bring a little bit more attention to the subject. So I'm gonna create this radial filter around my subject there. Make sure invert's ticked because I want it to affect the area inside the circle. Bring my feather up to 100%. Bring that in a little bit, just change the size a little bit. To bring attention to my subject, usually I increase clarity. Bring up the whites. And also reduce contrast a tiny bit. Now, on this one, I could also bring up the shadow a tiny bit. If I pull that out, you can see how already it's added quite a bit of attention to the subject. The second thing in this photo, I want to increase that sunlight at the top of the image. So I'm going to grab another radial filter, nice big one at the top there, rotate it a little bit, bring it down to the top of her head. Now, for this one, I want it to be orange, so I'm going to change the temperature more to orange. It's actually not inverted, so I need to make sure it's affecting the area inside that circle. I'm also going to bring that clarity right down, which makes it really soft. It almost makes it glow a little bit. Pull that down a little bit more. Again, make sure my feather's at 100. I'm going to add in a little bit of haze on this one, which gives it that kind of hazy sunlight feel, and maybe add in a tiny bit of exposure. Again, if I pull that one away, you can see how it's created a nice soft orange glow at the top of the image there. Now lastly for this one, another useful thing for radial filters is to create a vignette, especially when you want to create a vignette that's not dead in the center of your image. So my subject's not centered. If I want to create a nice vignette around the subject there, again, another radial filter around the subject, and then just bring the exposure in a little bit. So again, it's just created a nice little vignette around the subject there which is really handy when your subject's not in the center. So there's one image where I've shown you three quick uses for radial filters. Let's go to a second image. This one again, I'm gonna apply a quick preset to to give it some color. You can see the sunlight in this one's coming from behind the castle. So I wanna add in a radial filter that's gonna affect that area behind the castle, but not the front of the castle, which is a little bit trickier. So I'll show you how to do that. Add in a radial filter, nice big one at the back there. Tick your invert box. Again, I want it to be a little bit orange, a little bit more brighter. Reduce the clarity to really make that glow. I also want to add in a tiny bit of haze by reducing that dehaze slider. And you can already see the problem. The sun should be coming from behind the castle, but it's already brightening up the front of the castle here. So we're gonna come down to range mask and use luminance. This basically means you can change this range and that radial filter is only gonna affect darker or lighter parts of your image. So in this image, the castle should be a bit darker than the background. So if I bring in this range from the left and pull it in, you'll see that radial filter doesn't affect the castle as much. It's still affecting the background, not as much, but if I pull it away, you can see you're still getting a nice bit of light. So that's one way to make your radial filters look a little bit more natural and not affect the whole area within that radial filter. 
So I use this one all the time. So lastly, for this image, I wanna create a little bit more attention to the castle there. So again, radial filter, invert, make it a little bit bigger, feather at 100, bring up that clarity, bring up my whites, and reduce the contrast. So again there you can see how it's just added a lot more detail to the castle. Lastly again if I wanted to create a little bit more of a vignette just around the castle, create a nice big one, I might want to darken it there. And again maybe reduce that clarity just so the castle is more of a focus than the rest of the image. So there you have it, two quick edits to use radial filters to really improve your overall editing. This is the first of my five minute Lightroom tutorial series, so remember to subscribe so you can check out the rest of the series to come. If there's any particular parts in Lightroom you'd like me to focus on, please hit me up in the comments and I'll try and make a video of those in the future. For now, I'm TK North, thanks so much for stopping by, thanks for watching, I hope to see you next time. I'm going to jump back in and get back to editing, so I'll see you soon. Bye. Oh, you guys are still here. Alright, bye now. Back to work.